disclaimer I might be completely delusional in believing that my body has physically changed since identifying as male so take the following video with a pinch of salt and disbelief so how I'm gonna talk about these changes is um, kind of going through a list of uh, things that other trans men have talked about because the situation is um, since I've uh, come out as Jace and uh, kind of since I've been like questioning my identity I seem to have gained more natural testosterone um, which is strange and the reason I, I think it might be I've had an influx of testosterone is because I've been watching a lot of trans men male youtubers and uh, watching all the one month on T, two month on, months on T, three months on T videos. And what I've noticed is that um, a lot of the changes that happen on one month on testosterone for trans men has already happened to me a little bit. Uh, so I'm just gonna go, um, I'm gonna go from what um, trans male YouTubers um, notice in their first months on testosterone. And I'm also um, going by this list that I found online from Vancouver Health, I think. I don't know how much it'll affect me. But it seems like a general uh, list of the changes and effects of testosterone that happen. So uh, let's go through them and see what's, uh, what's happened. Increased sex drive. Oh, well, <laughs> nah, that doesn't happen. My sex drive is non-existent. That, that's such a small part of my life, I don't even care. Vaginal dryness. Uh, I wouldn't know. Growth of your clitoris. Okay, these are getting personal. I'm not gonna answer these. Here we go. Increased growth, coarseness, and thickness of hairs on arms, legs, chest, back, and abdomen. Yes, absolutely that has happened. I have gotten so much hairier. Here are some pictures for you to see. At the end of this video, Chase did not have time to edit. Oilier skin and increased acne. Um, I don't think my skin has been oily, and I only really get acne when I have um when I'm stressed or before my periods. Um, so I don't think that's been happening. Though I have been ridiculously warm <laughs> since since it's so weird. Like I don't think it's just my binders. I wear a full length binder, um, which does make me a little bit hotter. But even like in the in the coldest days, I haven't felt as cold as I used to feel. Winter was always a bitch for me because I would always just feel horribly cold and I would always want to feel warm. Uh, this year, like going through winter, I did not feel that cold as much. I just had this kind of radiating heat coming from me that kind of made things a little bit better. Of course, this summer it's been absolutely terrible because, I, because I'm hotter and the weather's been hotter. I've just been melting. I think it's a general positive um, improvement. I do not like being cold. I do not like being hot either, but there are ways to um, kind of deal with that, I think. Okay, there is increased muscle mass and upper body strength. Um, I don't think that's happened naturally. I think that's only happened because I've been lifting weights and doing exercise regularly this year, um, so it'll probably be because of that, but I have noticed that I'm getting getting a few muscles in my arms and a few muscles in my legs. I did used to have a firm stomach, I used to do a lot of stomach crunches, but um, I've kind of been letting that go recently, so I'm kind of getting a little bit of a pot belly, but um, don't worry, I'll be starting the exercise soon enough <laughs> again, um, when I'm, when I'm, when I, I'll get there when I get there, okay? Redistribution of body fat for more masculine pattern, more fat around the waist, less around the hips. Um, I think the opposite has happened. I mean, I definitely think some weight has definitely changed or moved around my stomach and my hips. They do not feel the same as they used to. Um, I think I've lost weight on my hips and my, uh, and my, uh, like, hip bones. Um, but also, um, have put a lot of weight on on my stomach, and also for some reason a lot more on my actual waist and hips. I have an hourglass body shape, um, but for some reason my waist feels like it's getting higher and higher up my torso, so that I'm not, so that my hips are just like kind of growing. Does this mean I'm getting a trunk? Does this mean I'm getting a more masculine pattern? I hope so. And the rest is just stuff that happens after three to six months on testosterone. So menstrual periods stop, my periods haven't stopped, um, but they happen so quickly. They're so quick and painless that like, I might as well not have them, uh, which is good, but it's not so good when I ha still have the 
one to two weeks of despair and suicidal ness that happens with my premenstrual uh, dysphoric disorder, which I have had for five years now. Fantastic. And also voice starts to crack and drop. Um, but can take a year to finish changing. That's what I really, really want to happen. I'm sure that if I was still living by myself, um, my voice would be getting lower and lower and lower. But because I've been living back with my parents and seeing my family, I have to use a higher voice because I'm still female with them. So I've sort of lost my lower range, which I loathe, especially with singing, because the songs that I used to be able to sing um, living by myself, that I cannot sing anymore, um, which I really, which I'm very angry about. So um, I'm hoping once I move away again in September and work on dropping my voice and lowering my voice more, it should stick around a little bit more. So that's from that list there that I've ticked off. But I would say, um, from my own experience, um, after a year, I'd say there are three things that I've just. Um, that I can describe myself as to people in just a general succinct way, which is I am hotter, hungrier, and hairier. Um, I've already talked about being hairy, um, kind of already talked about being hotter. Being hungry, I'm so damn hungry all the time now. Um, it's like, I try and give myself three meals a day, but some days that just does not cut it, and I've got to have so many snacks. Um, it doesn't help that generally my body cannot go four hours without food. Uh, which is a problem when I'm working and I don't have breaks so by the end of the work shift I am practically on my deathbed and I as soon as I am out that door I have to eat something um, but yeah it's gotten really bad at the moment and of course I don't want to eat too much because I'm trying to work on my weight here but oh well the only thing that I haven't talked about is hormones and um, whether I want to start taking hormones and um, this is kind of a annoying subject. Um, I When I first came out as Jace, um, I was just comfortable with the gender fluid label. I was comfortable as identifying as non-binary and switching between genders between male and non-binary. But then it was around January this year that um, I started watching the male YouTubers and um, noticing all the changes that were sort of happening to my body that I kind of realised that maybe testosterone might be an answer and I think it was with talking about my hormone imbalance in general. I could go into all of the hormone cycle, menstrual cycle and everything but I'm not going to. But basically it came down to this, I went to my GP and um, we had an, I had a talk, asked if I could possibly be referred to a gender clinic um, to start hormones because that's where I think I am. But unfortunately my GP told me that um, it's, I, she thinks it'll be safer for me to wait until I've got enough financial stability by myself and emotional stability by myself to start um, hormones because I still have a year left in uni and um, I'm still depending on my parents for money um, and basically it comes down to if I come out to my parents and they cut me off for good I will not have any um, of that stability anymore um, which will make me worse so um I, my gp has given me the advice to wait until i've graduated from uni wait until i'm in a full-time job where i'm earning enough money to live on and um, possibly have emotional stability so like a partner that um that can help me out that will support me through all of this <laughs> good luck finding that and basically just more waiting, which is kind of a pain because once you are referred to a gender clinic, you have to be put on the waiting list and that can take up to like at least six months. So it's just more waiting, I guess. Um, so recently I've just kind of had to come to terms with the waiting and just kind of basically deal with doing everything that I can without hormones to try and be the best person I can be try and be the best man I can be and so that's what I'm gonna do for the next couple of years until I get the go-ahead um, so that's where I am at the moment uh, I hope I answered that question uh, from the beginning of the uh, video I know I've gone on for an absolute age if you're still here thanks for watching and um, I shall let you go you shall be free you've had your gender talk for the day um, I'll see you around whenever um, and uh, I I'm gonna end it here, I can't talk, bye!